Okay, time to review another Spyderco knife. This here is the Manix 2, which is a roughly $100 knife, a bit more or less, depending on where you look. As you can see one feature that catches the eye right away is this ball bearing lock, which is definitely unique. This was also one of the main reasons why I got it. The uh, blade is made of CPM S30V steel. The handle scales are G10, as is most often the case with Spyderco knives. You have uh, steel liners here, a pocket clip that can be changed from one side to the other, but unfortunately you are stuck with tip up carry, you cannot switch to tip down carry, which doesn't bother most people because tip, tip up carry is quite common, popular, but um, it would have been nice to have that. Granted though, the, the lock would probably be a bit in the way if I compare it to the Tenacious. Maybe if they had repositioned it a little bit, they might have gotten away with putting the, the holes on there, but uh, I can see why they didn't go with that, why this is one position belt clip only. What I really like about this is that it has this oh, slight swell here, or whatever you want to call it, and um, this piece here, which forms kind of a guard, that is both very comfortable and very secure to hold it like this, combine, combined with the generous jimping here. Feels very nice. It's exactly the right kind of jimping in my opinion. It's not too aggressive, but it's substantial enough to really do the job nicely. And uh, you can see here the fingers just curl naturally around the handle. Feels really good in the hand. Also interesting that they added some jimping here on the liners, which is a, quite a nice touch. I like that. It uh, feels pretty good and uh, you have continuous jimping all the way up to this point and uh, makes it very secure if you choke down a bit. Also some jimping over here. Again, very nice touch. I like it quite a bit. And in addition to that, you have a lanyard hole, which is always great to have. Let's take a closer look at this lock here. So what happens is the spring it exerts constant pressure and wants to push this little ball bearing up and uh, you can see and there it snaps up and uh, people have had issues with this lock before I've heard uh, people complain about the lock failing and uh, it when I just handle it like this it seems very sturdy no problem at all but uh, then I did a test to figure out if this is really a problem
So as you just saw, when there's significant impact on the spine of the blade, it does indeed slip. The lock disengages and the knife closes, but um, as you also saw, when I actually stabbed into the wood with this knife, nothing happened. So uh, th the spine whack test, I'm not really sure uh, if you should go by that, because it seems a bit excessive. With normal use, that would just not happen. And I cannot really see that without using it for something really extreme. Uh, I can't really see it failing under most circumstances. So yeah, it is not as secure and damage resistant as some really good liner locks or flame frame locks. But, um, I mean, we're talking abuse here. If, if you have that much impact on the spine, there is something going on that you shouldn't really use a folding knife for, in my opinion. So if this is really relevant, well, that's up to you. But um, I think it's a bit excessive to test like that. Nevertheless, it's good to know that this lock has its limitations and it's good to be aware of those. What about the sharpness? Well, let's grab some newspaper. As you can see, cuts the newspaper effortlessly. This is with the plain edge. Well, it depends on how you get it. It, it doesn't really cut with a push cut. Well, a little bit, but that's nah, more ripping, actually. It's, it's not sharp enough to cut newspaper with a push cut, but a draw, draw cut is no problem. And um, what I generally like about serrations on Spyderco knives, the serrations are excellent and they are really damn sharp. I mean, on some knives, the, the serrations wouldn't really be able to cut newspaper like this, but as you can see, you, you get this sort of wavy pattern when you cut with the serrations, but uh, it does work. So the serrations are really nice and sharp. And overall, the sharpness is just excellent. Show you a close up of the edge. Serrations. Very nice, super fine edge. As it's pretty common with spider knives, they always have come with absolutely fantastic edges right out of the box. No need to resharpen them at all. They are really amazing. One thing that you should expect that this lock here needs is some break-in period. When it came out of the box, this thing was freakishly stiff. <laughs> I got sore fingers from, from trying to operate it at first because it was just enormously a stiff spring here. But uh, when you play around it, with it for a while, it becomes really nice and smooth. As you can see right here, I can just pretty easily one-handedly close it. And this is exactly what I like about this lock. You can operate it very easily just by holding it down. And I mean, it, it comes out if you just hold it at an angle. The, the knife wants to open on its own. If you just open the lock, yeah. There it is, locked. It's really super smooth and easy to open. Very comfortable. And it's also very nice that you can open it without having to put your thumb here. So your fingers are completely safe. That is a very nice feature here. Alternatively, if you want, you can also do fancy things. Like open it this way or this way. There are definitely ways to play around with this knife. So overall, what is my impression of this? Well, I have to say I love it. It's a really nice knife, very functional. I absolutely like the, the ergonomics here. Super comfortable and secure finger troil and then just the shape in general is very nice in the hand. G10 of course always feels great, uh, has a very slight texturing to it which makes it nice and grippy but is not uncomfortable in any way, not abrasive. 
and uh, yeah, super sharp right out of the box, very functional. I absolutely have no complaints about it whatsoever. The only thing, well, the only kind of heads up that I have to give is that, like I said, the lock is not the most uh, secure thing in the world. It can fail, but um, like I said, you kind of have to abuse it for that to happen. So I don't really consider that to be a significant problem in everyday use. So if you like how this looks and are willing to spend about 100 bucks for a knife, go for it. Definitely recommend it.